New comic book day is right around the corner. What are you most excited to read? Hey comic book fans, welcome back to Comic Book Corner 2.0 and fans, you're back with me, Mike Spider Slayer, getting ready to bring you the top 10 most anticipated comics for 31319. That's right, fans. Uh, yeah, this is a video series where each and every week I show you the fans what my most anticipated comics are. And at any time in the video, guys, if you want to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to the channel, that would be great. And you can also leave what your most anticipated comics are as well. So, without further ado, fans, let's not waste any more time. Let's talk about the books that are on the hot seat. That's right, the books that I could be dropping at any moment in time. So, the first one goes to Red Hood and Outlaw. This is issue 32. Um, the last story arc was kind of weak. It was kind of cheesy. I didn't mm -hmm. like it. This book seemed to lack the emotional impact that it had last year. And I'm hoping with this new story arc, it brings that emotional input, uh, impact back uh, to the reader and hopefully these stories are a little bit more in depth now uh, going forward. Okay, so my next book that's on the hot seat now is going to Old Man Quill issue 3. I'm not sure how many heroes we have to have that take place in the wastelands, right? Um, you know, we had Old Man Logan, Old Man Hawkeye. That totally makes sense because those two characters intertwined in that series. And now you have Peter Quill who they happen to go to Earth and they come across, you know, they're going to come across, uh, what's his name? Dr. Doom. And Dr. Doom is cool and whatnot, but I don't know if this series can really hold my attention the whole time that it's out. Issue 2 was better than Issue 1 because Issue 1 was a setup. So we'll see what Issue 3 has to offer and it's going to really, I think, make a decision if I will continue to buy this series. Now, I've already decided that I'm dropping Fantastic Four, and I'm already deciding that I'm dropping Tony Stark Iron Man, and those books were definitely, you know, on the hot seats as well at one point. And, you know, there's just a lot of comics coming out, and if these comics don't meet your expectations, you know, you gotta learn to drop them. You can't read everything. Am I right? All right, so now let's move forward to the official countdown. We're gonna move on to number 10. And number 10 goes to Spawn Kills Everyone. Two, this is issue four. This is the conclusion to the series. It's only a mini series and it's a lot of fun having Spawn's little babies kill all of the superheroes in the comic universe. I think it's hilarious. It's a lot of fun. If you have the extra income, um, I would definitely recommend this to you guys or just wait until it comes out into trade. I don't think it's going to be more than 10 bucks. But if you like Todd McFarlane's writing and uh, you like Spawn Kills Everyone in the first series, you might like this one. All right, so pushing on forward to number two, um, or number two, number nine, excuse me, my number nine most anticipated book of the week it goes to Superman issue nine. Now, the only reason why this is probably number nine on the list is because at the end of issue eight, we got shown the crime syndicate. That was the cliffhanger. And it looks like John's coming across the crime syndicate. And I'm like, oh, wow, that's kind of cool. Um, but I'm not a really huge fan of Brian Michael Bendis' Superman. I'm, I'm not. I just His writing is too slow-paced for me. It, nothing happens in a lot of the issues. And it, it's just it's just a stall. And, um, and that's why I'm not a huge fan of Action Comics and Superman. I don't hate them, but it just takes forever to get to the point. There are some good emotional impacts as well. But it's just it's just not my cup of tea. When Tomasi did it, I loved his Superman. So again, everybody has different tastes. So that's my number nine. Let's move on to number eight. And my number eight most anticipated book of the week goes to a new series, The Magnificent Ms. Marvel. This is issue one. This is priced at $3.99 for a Ms. Marvel book. Solid and Mad is the writer and um uh, Minku Young is the uh, artist on this book. Now, 
it's number eight on my list. It's a little bit lower because I don't know what to expect at this point when it comes to Miss Marvel. We have a new creative team. Obviously, we don't have uh, G. Willow Wilson on the book anymore. So how is the new writer going to, you know, bring Carmella's voice to the table, right? Is, is or Are we going to do it the right way? Uh, what's it going to offer? I know this first issue has to do about with these aliens or whatnot. Mm -hmm. So, and that's not something that we've seen in Miss Marvel. But what I really want to see from this series going forward is a real adversary against her. You know, I think that's what really makes a character. There is a freaking bird that is chirping away out here. And it, I cannot think. It is driving me crazy. Shut the fuck up. Oh my God. Yeah, so as you know, I film in my garage, so my garage door is slightly open to bring in extra light. <laughs> this bird won't shut up. But anyway, going back to Ms. Marvel, it has to do with a, a, a you know a good adversary. And uh, without that, I don't think maybe the character can really shine as strong as it should. Why do you love Spider-Man so much? Part of it has to do with the villains. Yes, the hero is good. But part of it has to do with the villains. Why do you like Batman so much? Because of the villains. You know what I'm saying? So I'm hoping Ms. Marvel gets some worthy adversaries that, you know, to make her a stronger character. So we'll see what happens. And we'll see if uh, Ahmed can actually capture that supporting cast as well. All right. So next on my list is at number seven. My number seven most anticipated book of the week goes to Transformers issue one. Um, <clears throat> this is written by Brian Ruckley and the art is done by Angel Hernandez. Um, I always give Transformers a try and I always wind up hating it because the dialogue in these books and the history in these books are so ridiculously crazy. Okay. And it's just like, it feels like you have to read a dictionary. It's like its own language to understand this book, you know? And now with this new number one, I'm hoping that truly with a relaunch of the series that we get maybe both of the histories combined. I don't know with the comic and the cartoon. Maybe it's just a good jumping on point that maybe readers can truly understand and it's not such a chore to read every time you read a series. So we'll see what happens with Transformers. I'm hoping it's new reader friendly. I'm hoping it's not dialogue, friend, uh, dialogue heavy and I'm hoping I can understand it while reading it. So we'll see what happens with Transformers issue one. All right. Moving on to number six. Number six is Avengers No Road Home. This is issue five. Um, this is a, a pretty solid series. Right now, I truly liked No um, No Road. Yeah, No Surrender a little bit better. Um, just because I just liked how the Voyager was introduced, and I like the game. Uh, you know, the Grandmaster and the Challenger. I like that aspect of Earth being a playing board. This one has to do with more of gods. And there's a lot of gods to know. I felt like the last issue was a little bit all over the place. There was a lot of information to digest. A lot of moving pieces. Um, what's real, what isn't real. And in this book, in this issue, Scarlet Witch is trying to escape Nix's prison. Because she sees now her eyes are Nix's eyes. And then Hulk has to take on Hypnos, which is the god of sleep. And, or the lord of sleep. And, you know... And now he has to be in this uh, realm of nightmare. So uh, interesting concept here of what's going on when it comes to No Road Home. Uh, and I'm curious to see what the end result is here and what is the purpose of this series uh, going forward. You know, a lot of it had to do with um, the last one with introducing the Voyager and Immortal Hulk and, and things like that. So what's the purpose of this one? Does it have to go into the major event of... Uh, uh, the realm or whatever it is with Thor series. So hope maybe it ties into that. We'll see. All right. So moving on to the top five and my number five, most anticipated book of the week goes to spider Gwen ghost spider issue six. The last book was very emotional with Gwen Stacy dealing with all her responsibilities of being Gwen Stacy. She has no problems being ghost spider but she has a problem being herself and that's the hardest thing for her to deal with and i love that issue 
And in this issue, it looks like we're dealing with the threat now. Um, as the hand has fallen, we have a new enemy that has risen, and we don't know them, but the only person that we do know that this is, that I guess leads this new threat is Manwolf. And I think that's kind of cool. And I'm looking forward to seeing what this has to offer for its readers and how does Gwen Stacy deal with herself. And uh, that's her biggest struggle. All right, so moving on to number four, and my number four most anticipated book of the week goes to Murder Falcon issue six. Now, I'm not sure when this series actually ends. I'm not sure if this is the last issue or not, uh, but Magnum Chaos is the evil lord in this world. He's made his way through the Earth realm, and Jake, who is the heavy metal guitarist that, you know, winds up making entities from his guitar by the name of Murder Falcon, teams up with another band member from another band, and it looks like they're going to do battle against the the threat, right? It's, it's like two rivals that come together to defeat the main boss, but it's in heavy metal music style. Um, really cool story, really emotional story as well as it deals with the main character. Um, I love this series. Again, guys, I've said this multiple times. If you haven't read Murder Falcon, um, definitely when the trade does come out, I recommend it. It's a cool story. All right, so moving on to our top three and my number three most anticipated book of the week goes to Wonder Twins issue two. Um, the first issue was a blast. I love that first issue. Um, we had the Wonder Twins solve, a, you know, uh, do battle against Mitzel Flick and they wound up prevailing. You got to see uh, where they came from. You got to see how they kind of deal with high school life. And I think that's very relatable to younger readers as well uh, when you dealt with high school and fitting in and, and making sure you're part of the crowd. Um, you know, everyone can relate to that at one point or another. But in this issue, uh, we have uh, Jaina and Zane. They're going on a high school trip to uh, LexCorp Prison. So what's going to happen in that particular issue? It sounds very interesting. It sounds very comical. And that's what I like about this. You know, it's a, it's a, it's a lighthearted book. It's not taken too seriously. You know, they're not going after battles and, you know, it's not heavy book. It's just light and you get to see what's going on there. Maybe we'll get to see a little bit more back history with them on why they really did come to Earth and why did Superman chose to pick them. I don't know. But I think... The plot of this story sounds like it could be a lot of fun. All right, so we move on now to my number two. My number two most anticipated book of the week. It goes to Dead Man Logan, issue five. This is a great series. If there's a Wolverine book out there that you should be reading right now, it's Dead Man Logan, guys. This is an awesome series, okay? Um, old man Logan, he's dying. He's got adamantium poisoning and he's got his ass kicked. They're trying to, you know, resurrect him, you know, trying to keep him alive. And we find out that Mysterio was teaming up with the bad guys to, you know, to defeat or take over Earth. But when we find out that the bad guys were actually using Mysterio, he winds up changing sides and goes with Hawkeye and goes to Logan and they go to infiltrate the, um, Neo Hydra base and uh, it looks like in this issue what's going to happen is they might get captured and we're going to find out what the fate of Mysterio is going to be. This is a lot of fun. There's great humor in this book between characters, especially with Hawkeye and Logan, because it stays true to the Old Man Logan and Hawkeye series. So I like that relationship aspect. And even with Mysterio and Hawkeye as well, this is a great book to read. If you guys haven't started reading it, you might be able to pick it up in the comic book store on the shelf with some back issues. Or again, when this series is done, which won't be for a while because it's a year-long uh, series, um, you might want to pick this up in trade, but it's a great read. So, and if you're sick of Wolverine and all the bullshit with Infinity Gems and you know him coming back to life and all this other stuff, erase all that crap. Pick this up. This is the one good Logan book that's out right now. All right. So, what's number one this week? Well, my number one most anticipated comic of the week goes to none other 
than my favorite, The Amazing Spider-Man issue 17. Now the reason being that this is number one this week is because finally after 16 issues we've been teased with this hunted storyline and this is the very first part. So I'm very excited to see what this story has to offer. We have Kraven the Hunter that's been capturing these Spider-Man villains and it looks like the only one left is obviously Spider-Man himself. Um, why he's been collecting all these characters, I don't know, but maybe he's looking to make a profit. Maybe he's looking to release them out in Central Park with that shield that he was talking about and have all these normal people hunt these villains for a sport since they've been killing his animals. So that could be the, you know, the plot. I, I don't know, but he's working with Arcade as well. 36 pages. $4.99. Very much looking forward to this story. So there you guys have it. There are my top 10 most anticipated comics of the week for March 13th, 2019. Now it's your turn, guys, in the comments below to put what your most anticipated comics are, whether it's your top 10, your top 5, or your top 3 comics of the week, or even just that number 1 comic of the week. And uh, if there's something you're thinking of dropping, hey, put it in the comments below. So guys, as always, thank you so much for watching Comic Book Corner 2.0. I love that you love, I love that you are loving this series, <laughs> if that makes any sense. And uh, I'm going to go freaking chase that bird now. So guys, as always, give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and don't forget to hit that notification button so you don't miss a single video from me. And guys, I'll see you real soon. Take care, everyone. Bye.